The Gaja Classic Pro. It's been one of the most popular and highly recommended premium entry-level espresso machines for well over a decade. Sturdy, compact, 100% made in Italy by local craftsmen and women in the picturesque town of Gaggio Montano. Unlike competing appliance-grade espresso makers, this one is a true machine with commercial size and weight portafilter, three-way solenoid for dry, easy-to-knock-out coffee pucks, and a one-piece all-metal frame. For 2023, the best-in-class Classic Pro becomes the Classic Evo Pro with upgrades that make the best even better. Hey, espresso lovers, Mark here from Whole Latte Love and welcome to our video number 1814. I'm really excited to introduce you to the new Gaja Classic Evo Pro. So I first worked with the Gaja Classic about 12 years ago and I've been using it on a regular basis ever since. I'm very familiar with its evolution and what competing products have to offer. And speaking of those 1800 plus videos, I've linked a couple down in the description with everything you need to know to operate get great results from and maintain this machine. Now coming up in this video, I'll cover what sets the machine apart from other options, why it's a best value product. I'll take you start to finish through making a latte, show you what's in the box, and oh yeah, we'll take a look at those upgrades from the previous model, including a big one concerning brew pressure that's currently an exclusive for customers in North America. I'll also have some performance test results for milk frothing, brew temperature, and of course that brew pressure. I'll pop the hood and give you a look inside and finish up with some final thoughts. As always, if you like this content, be sure and subscribe to the channel. And if you have any questions on the classic Evo Pro or anything coffee, use those comments down there and I'd be happy to get you a detailed answer. So let's take a look at the upgrades in the classic Evo Pro. The big one that's exclusive to North America is a build on the foundation of nine bar extractions. So if you come across info on users maybe modifying their classics to get nine bar, it's no longer necessary. A new OPV results in a maximum of nine bar pressure on your coffee during extractions when measured as specified by the Specialty Coffee Association standards. Now, if you have a previous classic, no worries. They've been making fantastic espresso for decades. And the reality is it's the grind size of your coffee and flow rates which determine pressure in the portafilter. This is simply us working with Gaja to make a change based on feedback. Now on top of the max brew pressure change, there's a new food safe, inert, anti-scale protective coating in the boiler to prevent corrosion, reduce scale formation, and extend the life of the machine. The portafilter is upgraded to solid stainless steel from the previous chrome plated brass material. The result is a nicer finish that eliminates the visual imperfections of the previous material. And the stainless is the same weight at about 460 grams or about one pound. The heavy brass group head remains the same, but chrome plating is replaced with a polished steel surround. This will improve the look of the machine down the road as that chrome plating could flake off after many years of use. Internally, the boiler and pump mounts have been improved to reduce noise. Otherwise, the machine remains the same. It still has the commercial style stainless steel steam wand on a rotating joint, commercial grade rocker switches for power, brewing, and steam, and of course, the three-way solenoid valve you don't get on entry level appliance grade products for drier, easy to knock out coffee pucks. Even before the upgrades in the new Evo model, the Classic Pro was a best value. There's just no other product at this price with a full size and weight 58 millimeter commercial portafilter. That's important. It means excellent temperature stability and compatibility with accessories like precision filter baskets, tampers, and prep tools to upgrade your experience. Now there are espresso appliances that cost less, but those, you know, they're gonna come with some compromises. They're 
typically limited to smaller, lightweight portafilters, smaller coffee doses, pressurized filter baskets, questionable temperature stability, and plastic, you know, like lots of plastic. It's in housings and frames, inside portafilters. They use thermal block heaters usually, which transfer no heat to the group head. In the classic Evo Pro, there's an actual boiler heating water and the heavy brass brew group the portafilter locks into. It also heats a cup warming surface, something you usually don't see in the lower cost appliance grade units. Now, as a machine, the classic Evo Pro is built to last. You get peace of mind with a two-year parts and labor warranty and in North America, a team of dedicated tech and service pros to help you out if you need it. As a machine, DIYing is easy. Parts are cheap and easy to get and how-to information is readily available. So let me take you through making a latte. The Classic is a very easy machine to operate. For initial startup, fill your reservoir from the top or you can pull it out from the front for filling. Turn on the power, place a cup under the group and press the brew switch. Allow five ounces, about 150 milliliters of water to flow from the group to fill the boiler, then turn off the brew switch. If you will be grinding whole beans fresh, use either the single or double shot non-pressurized basket. They're the ones that look like this with lots of tiny holes in the bottom. Keep your portafilter in the group during warm up and whenever it's not in use so it stays warm. Allow the machine to warm up for about 10 minutes and it's ready to make your first espresso. Once your machine is warmed up, load your coffee. Now, if you're not familiar with how to dial in your grind size, check out my video in the description that takes you through finding the right grind size and how to prepare the coffee in the portafilter. Well, you can use a tamper which comes with a machine. I do suggest you pick up a more substantial tamper or leveler to make your prep easier and more consistent. For locking in your portafilter, operate the brew switch briefly. This flushes the group and equalizes temperatures. Then lock in your portafilter and press the brew switch. Most people are gonna time their extraction looking for 20 to 30 seconds. If you need some basic training on that, check out those videos in the description. As your shots extracting, get some milk in your frothing pitcher. How much depends on your final drink size. I'm gonna use this much for my cup. When the extraction is complete, turn off the brew switch and press the steam switch. Allow about 20 seconds for the machine to heat up for steaming. While that's happening, you can knock the puck out of your portafilter. For steaming, the light by the steam switch will come on when it reaches full steaming temperature, but a trick with this machine is you don't have to wait for it. 20 seconds after flipping the switch is all it takes. Before steaming, open the steam valve to purge any residual water. Close the valve and position the tip just below the surface of the milk, then open the valve. There's a little skill involved in frothing milk. If you need help with that, there's a great video, again, down in the description for beginners that will teach you how and takes you right through to pouring latte art. Now, once your milk is frothed, wipe down your steam wand. After that, be sure to purge the wand of any residual milk and cool down the boiler. To do that, position the wand over another cup or the drip tray, open the steam valve and press both the brew and steam switch. Allow the pump to run until you get a solid stream of water out of the steam wand. Be sure and do the purge and cool down every time you're done steaming milk. Now you can swirl and tap the pitcher to mix and break up larger bubbles if you have any, then pour over your espresso and you know maybe add some art or try to if you're so inclined. Art or not, it still tastes the same. All in all, the Classic is quick and easy to use. If you're new to espresso, the techniques quickly become second nature with a little practice. Now for this demo, I used whole beans ground fresh, but if you don't have a grinder yet, the Classic Evo Pro comes with a pressurized filter basket for use with pre-ground coffee. Or you can use easy serve espresso pods in the standard single shot basket. If using pre-ground, place the diffuser pin in the portafilter and mount the pressurized filter basket with a single hole in the bottom in your portafilter. If using pre-ground, make sure it's ground very fine and intended for espresso. Coffee ground for drip brewing will not work for espresso.
For test results, I'll take a quick look at milk frothing performance and brew pressure with the new OPV upgrade, which delivers nine bar of brewing pressure during an extraction. Along with that, we'll get a reading on brew temperature. For frothing, I'll measure how long it takes to froth five ounces or 150 milliliters of fridge temp milk to the Specialty Coffee Association standard of 140 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 60 degrees Celsius. Using the same method I did when making the latte earlier, I'll start steaming about 20 seconds after turning the steam switch on. This actually produces better steaming than waiting for the machine to indicate steam ready as the boiler heating elements stay on. Frothing time to the finished temperature was about 24 seconds and total time from steam switch on came in at about 48 seconds. To test brew pressure and temperature, I'm using the Passato TPD. It takes measurements inside a portafilter during simulated extractions. I'm modeling my test on Specialty Coffee Association standards and methods. Now, typically I'd use a SCASE device for this, but the one I have does not fit in the classic. Unlike a SCASE, the Passato does not have a mass on the portafilter to represent a coffee puck and how that might affect temperature readings. It's totally empty inside. It's also a little finicky when it comes to adjusting flow rates. The release of water during the test simulates that real extraction. Now, I was able to get some tests at the SCA spec flow rate of 52 grams of water out in 25 seconds, plus or minus three seconds. As you can see, brew pressure when adjusted to SCA brew water flow rate is at about eight and three quarter to nine bar in the test, in line with a standard nine bar found on more expensive prosumer level machines. For brew temperature, I'm using the general SCA method, so I kept the test portafilter locked in the group for about 10 minutes. Then about two minutes before the test, as prescribed by Gaja, I ran some brew water through and then emptied the test device of residual water. Now, I'll show you the whole test, but notice before it starts, it's already in the high 180s in the portafilter due to passive heating from the group and the flush as prescribed by Gaja. As the test begins, the brew water is briefly over 205, but I'll stop here at nine seconds in to show you as the machine reaches full brew pressure, the temperature is at 202.8. I'm perfectly okay with that slightly hotter water initially, as in the real world, it cools immediately as it contacts the coffee. And as I mentioned earlier, there's nothing in the test device to simulate the effect of the coffee on temperatures. As we continue, temps drop right into the middle of the 195 to 205 range and then cool a bit to finish a little above 195. Using the SCA standard and throwing away temps during the first three seconds and averaging the rest, the brew temperature came out at 200.46. The SCA also allows brew temp to be recorded as the most commonly observed temperature, which was 200.3 at 14 to 16 seconds into the test. Now, my guess is if I were using a SCASE device, the dummy coffee load would have moderated the initial temps a bit and held finishing temps a bit higher. Now, do these results match those of a PID controlled prosumer level dual boiler machine? No, but I have to say coming out with an average temp that's smack in the middle of the espresso brewing range is pretty darn impressive. And those prosumer machines, <laughs> they run about six times the cost of the classic Evo Pro. Beyond that, if you wanna get into manipulating temperatures, it's straightforward on the classic. Classic. Using an extra short flush to cool things down or turning on the steam switch for a few seconds to heat it up. The Gaja Classic Evo Pro is a flexible machine. In addition to the commercial standard single and double shot basket, it comes with a pressurized double shot basket for use with pre-ground coffee. That allows you to get into home espresso without a grinder. It comes with a double spout, stainless steel portafilter, a coffee scoop, plastic tamper, and the diffuser pin for use with the pressurized basket. You know, the original Gaja Classic Pro is one of, if not the most popular premium grade entry-level espresso machines. There's just no other true machine-grade product with commercial-sized components available at anywhere near its price. 
with a new classic Evo Pro model, the best value machine just got better. With the food safe anti-scale boiler treatment, solid stainless steel portafilter, and of course the new OPV, which provides the standard nine bar brew pressure. Pair all that with respectable performance, upgradability with industry standard parts, a two year parts and labor warranty, easy access to real professional technical assistance, and a working lifespan that's measured in decades. And the Gaja Classic Evo Pro will likely continue as the best value in the premium entry level machine class. Now, if you have questions on the Evo Pro or anything coffee, use those comments. I'd be happy to get you a detailed answer. I'm Mark, thanks for watching. And if you love coffee and espresso as much as I do, be sure and subscribe to the channel and come back soon for more of the best on everything coffee brought to you by Whole Latte Love.